This is the final report on JT's case, retreatment case number 581. This was a prior root canal that uh, JT retreated. There had been an apico on the first molar. These are his pre-op and post-op uh, radiographs of the case. So there was uh, some uh, paresthesia uh, in the chin area. These are his pre- and post-op CBCTs, and this is his diagnosis page. Um, there's no record of uh, when the prior treatment was done or who did it. Uh, there's some uh, indication of uh, grinding. He wears a night guard, but uh, nothing to indicate occlusal trauma or the muscles of mastication appear to be within normal limits. And these are his testing results. The tooth was asymptomatic other than the uh, feeling of numbness. And the prior filling material was uh, gutta percha. And these are JT's clinical cases and his post-operative radiograph. It was uh, retreated uh, using the gentle wave device. And then uh, at the recall a year later, she still had some numbness and it was decided to extract the tooth. JT extracted the tooth and sent it to me. These are uh, photographs of the tooth as I got it. Got it. These, that's the mesial root. This is the distal root. And we did a sagittal split on this into two parts. These are the preoperative, my preoperative pre-assessment uh, radiographs. The fill looks uh, very well done. And when we split it sagittally, we did get a pretty good split where one half had the gutta percha and the other half, we had an opportunity to examine the uh, naked dentinal wall. So we did most of our imaging on the naked dentinal wall. Uh, there isn't much to see uh, by examining the gutta percha. We did look at the gutta percha side quite a bit. Didn't find uh, anything very specific or any troubling. Uh, there was a lot of sealer in all the inner connectors uh, in the root, consistent with uh, gentle wave treatment. And this is the non gutta percha side with a kind of an enhanced photograph so you can kind of see where we look. I spent about uh, four hours uh, examining both roots and I'll try to give you a kind of a summary of uh, what we found. This is the distal root. Uh, again, both roots looked exceptionally well obturated. This is the non gutta percha side. There were gutta, gutta percha on both sides of the sagittal split on the distal root. So we weren't able to examine the distal root quite as well as the mesial root because there was gutta percha on both sides. This is the problem when uh, evaluating obturated cases. And I did do some photographs of the sputter coated so you can kind of start to get a sense of your orientation because it's not always clear from the photographs of exactly where you're looking. So if you can learn to kind of interpret the sputter coated samples, you'll have a better idea of what what you're looking at. And we looked uh, all up and down the dentinal wall, and it has the uh, classic gentle wave appearance. The dentinal wall is very, very clean. I uh, didn't find anything concerning uh, in any of the instrument canals that we uh, looked at. It had the gentle wave uh, profile where the uh, etching of the dentinal wall kind of decreased a little as you go apically, but it was very, very clean in uh, every area that we looked at. There were remnants of sealer here and there and prior filling materials as well, but overall, um, it had that gentle wave look to it with the very clean dentinal walls. This gives you trying to give a sense of where you're actually looking in the canal. So we spent a lot of time looking for bacteria or biofilms, uh, red blood cells. We really didn't we did, really didn't see anything. So. 
This case was uh, exceptionally clean. There were certain areas uh, where the findings were a little more uh, provisional. I don't know if this was a lateral canal filled with sealer or exactly uh, what it was, but when you go into some of these areas, you uh, find a picture that's slightly different. And it's very hard to interpret because you have the old filling material, old sealer, new sealer, uh, instrumentation debris. So it's not always clear exactly uh, what you're looking at. Uh, when I went into some of these areas, um, it gives the suggestion of a remnant of some biofilms. But you have to be careful in interpreting these. Uh, I believe that the gentle wave device and the laser changes the appearance of biofilms, especially aged biofilms. So they don't look like lab tested uh, biofilms. So this gives the suggestion of uh, a candida or actinomyces type of uh, infection, but you can't be sure and you're really just guessing. And in any event, it's not your classic biofilm. When you go into some of these areas and look much deeper under the initial layer, um, you have a you have a signature that looks a little more like an aged biofilm. Although if these are organisms, they're a little small uh, to say definitively that these this is a biofilm. Although I'm highly suspicious that. Uh, it's a leftover biofilm, maybe even from the original treatment. So I'm trying to give you a sense of what it's like uh, to look at these. In any area where there's been an instrument, the dentin was very, very clean. In some areas, you can see some bacterial colonization uh, of the tubules, but a very, very minor. It's, it is very instrument interesting wherever the instrument touched and there was a smear layer uh, with the gentle wave what you notice is that the gentle wave is able to clean that very very well so wherever the instrument touched this is what the dentinal wall looked like there you can see some organisms in in the dentinal tubules but very very clean dentin but if you look in areas where the instrument didn't touch, you get a little bit different picture and the activity of the gentle wave is different. Uh, in cases where the instrument did not touch the wall and where it did touch the wall. So when you look in the untouched areas, um, you get more of a suggestion of a prior, a prior biofilm, but not conclusively. I showed some of these to Christoph, my mentor in SEM evaluations, because in the initial presentation, I called these out as fungi and a biofilm. And he said, don't be so sure. Um, this, the sizes are a little small and it gives a suggestion of it, but you can't tell with certainty. So when you look at some of these areas, uh, you want to be careful uh, in your assumptions and your certainty. For example, when you go into this, you see a lot of sealer there and you see what uh, appears to be maybe a, a, a fungi with bacteria over it, but those are small for uh, organisms. And uh, it could be just debris from the breakdown and dissolving of the, of the dentin. So um, there's a question there, what, what that is. It could be a it could be organisms, it might not be organisms. So you want to be careful. And when you have the breakdown of, of the dentin by EDTA, it, it can give structures that look like that are that are very easy to mistake for organisms. Uh, I called out this as a fungi, but Christoph uh, disagreed. So um, <clears throat> I'll take his opinion over mine any day. In the distal route, when we went and looked apically, um, we could be a little more certain. 
and pretty much everywhere you looked at the apical end of the distal root, uh, there were organisms present in a pretty, a pretty robust uh, biofilm. Um, and you should be far enough along in your pattern recognition to be able to see this with a certain amount of certainty. So that's the case. Very interesting case. Thank you, JT, for sending it. And uh, be interested in your comments.